Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Hunters Hunted to Corruption. Join us as we tell the tale of four men bonded by their fear and hatred of the hidden monsters that reside in Washington, D.C. in September of 2009. Only time will tell if Jebediah, played by Adam B., Robert, played by Adam C., Walter, played by Chris, and Dr. Turner, played by Tillman, will survive together in this story ran by Andrew. Hunters Hunted 2 is a Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition expansion set in the world of darkness. If you'd like to contact us, you can find us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM or find us on Facebook at Twin Cities by Night. We hope you enjoy. So, Washington Monument. You can find parking a couple of blocks away, no problem. Especially this late at night. Uh, There are people out, but not, you know, not as much as in the middle of the afternoon. It can be quite crowded. The protests that were happening earlier in the day have cleared up. The massive crowds have mostly cleared out, so it's not as, like, you know, restricting in traffic as it was before, uh, causing you guys to have to go around and divert. So you'll have to find, like, a place to park and then kind of walk for several blocks to get there because of, you know, how it is in the city here. How are you all going in? Jeb's going to park a bit away, and he'll... uh once he and the doctor get out of the truck, he'll transfer most of the stuff that was in the bed of the truck into the cabin so he can lock it up. But he'll take, what will what will he take? He will take a couple of guns with himself, ones that he can conceal fairly easily. And he'll make sure that the doc has the med kit. Oh, and he'll have a fanny pack. He'll put on a fanny pack so he can walk around uh, looking like a dumb tourist. Do we have like a sports bag so the med kit isn't super obvious with the bright red cross on it? And that's a good question. You. I'm not worried about it. Sure. Okay. So I'll just stuff it into another bag and carry that over the shoulder. Yeah, something you probably would have thought of before you left. Like, I need something to carry this in. Mm. Walter's just going to get out of the passenger seat of Robert's car when he like parks behind, I guess, Jeb, and just kind of, I'm just going to get out and I'm going to. Start walking towards the monument because I have total faith in these guys. Like, I'm in good hands, you know? Uh, Robert will step out of the car. He'll um, he'll feel for his, his handgun, which he is probably concealing in his waistband right now. He's, he doesn't have, like, his, his holster. It considers, he considers that more part of his uniform or whatever. So he just, he just uh, feels it, makes sure it's there, it's secure. And, um, yeah, he's, he's ready. Oh, actually, I think he's going to go back into the trunk and take out um, the camera that he used earlier and just kind of put it around his neck, just, you know, just to look more like a tourist. Okay. So, guys, you're, you're, you're walking to the monument. Uh, you cross uh, Constitution Avenue on 23rd Street. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place, really. There's that long reflecting pool and the building at the end and just there's people out around there's always always people out there's a gift store along the way you know they're still open still open there's people always out here and just kind of even the middle of the night it's an active it's a relatively active place you come up to there's like a a path that is like in a semicircle around behind the monument and the front faces the uh, reflecting pool so you you come up to that area, and as you can see, there's you know just people kind of some are taking pictures. It looks like there is like some late tours still happening of like someone going around and talking about the the president and all the miscellaneous stuff about President Lincoln. Uh, what do you guys do? I'm just gonna kind of try to like look like I'm part of just people looking at the monument, but kind of also trying to step away from it and kind of just openly like look around and kind of without screaming hey i'm here kind of like give signs that i'm someone waiting for someone to help myself stand out more for whoever's going to come and talk to me okay and uh the rest of you jeb's going to wander around 
you know, he'll hook one hand into the strap on his uh, fanny pack, and he'll just walk around pretending he's a tourist. Wow, man, that thing is big. You know, stuff like that. He'll mutter to himself. And uh, similarly, I'm going to just kind of walk around maybe pretending to take pictures, uh, but mostly just trying to, like, case the case the area. And is it possible I could do some sort of, like, a, like a perception to, to see if I notice any, any people that, you know, look out of place or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. You can use perception and alertness. And this would be a difficulty of six. So uh, it's, it just tourists you okay. just see you just see people who are just like average american citizens just like touring the city some of them maybe not american you know there might be some people uh visiting internationally who are who are there and just like like oh look at this look at this you know taking lots and lots of pictures okay good nothing out of the ordinary then hmm. is there like a hot dog stand maybe or just yeah, yeah, sure. Something like that. Maybe somebody I'm, who's taking advantage, having concessions. I don't want to be uh, too far away from um, Walter, but I don't want to stick out. So I'm waiting at the hot dog stand. I'm getting something to eat, maybe like uh, some Pepsi or whatever he has. And just stand there, eat a hot dog, and basically don't eat it and be super ready to walk over there. Okay. One thing, I want uh, Jebediah to roll a perception and awareness roll, please. We're looking for fives here. Which difficulty? Five? Five. One success. So, sort of uh, sitting on this, sitting on the like stairs to the monument, right? There's a man who is, people, people just walk right around him, you know? He, he, like you almost, didn't even notice him at all. It's like, but you, something about him just draws your attention to him, you know? And you're just kind of, you're, you're looking at this guy and you're like noticing little quirks and odd oddities about how other people just completely avoid him, you know? Like, uh, like there's like a kind of bubble around him, a space in which nobody is walking by, no one's sitting near close. They just kind of walk directly around him anyone who like you know the crowd uh tourists you know come walking up the stairs and they just all kind of split and walk around him and then reform on the other side like and don't even seem to notice that he was even there and it's it's really strange to you he's a dark skinned re like really dark skinned person from where you're at his his appearance is hard to kind of make out he's wearing like sunglasses and like a baseball cap and a jacket so it's like you know, kind of like he got, he does kind of look like somebody who would be touring the area, but at the same time, his the behavior and the behavior of the people around him is really weird. All right, Jeb will uh, shuffle on over next to uh, the dock. Hey, Doc, y'all see that Arab over there sitting down with the sunglasses? I don't, do I? I'm asking Andrew. <laughs> no, no, you do not. What? What are you what are you talking about? I it's sitting right there. Um yeah, glancing totally over not. there and my eyes are evading the person. I have no idea who you're talking about. Uh he's got like a Yankees baseball cap on and just kind of sitting there on the steps, not like not really uh doing anything. Just just sitting there. Mm. Man, that ain't good. Alright, you uh you hang back. I'm gonna I'm gonna go do a thing. Okay. Jeb will uh, sort of walk in the direction of that guy, and he'll pull out a cigarette and light it as he's walking, and he'll start muttering to himself about the the Washington Monument. Okay. And as he approaches, he'll see if the guy shifts, moves, pays attention, and he'll try to get a beat on what the guy's looking at. All right, so as you approach, why don't you give me a wits and empathy roll? i going to read its body language. Empa what? Empathy. Wits and empathy. Mm. Ain't got any of that empathy. Uh, just roll wits then. No difficulty increase. It's a, it's a talent. Okay, so just diff seven or six? Uh, six, yeah. All right. Oh, two successes. All right. So he is 
he he's kind of like scanning the crowd almost you know you can kind of see how like occasionally his head like turns he's just looking and watching and like a like searching almost and whenever you start like walking directly to him like you're walking in his direction you're not making it too obvious but at the same time you're you didn't say anything about hiding what you're doing so he does like immediately notice you as you approach him and he looks right at you but again wearing glasses so you can't really see exactly where he's looking but you know he he his head turns in your direction he right. notices you Jeb will stop a few feet away from him and he'll reach into the fanny pack and pull out one of those tourist maps and then he'll just sort of start looking at the map and then looking around and muttering where in the hell and he'll see if the guy reacts okay are you trying to uh like throw him for a loop what, what are you doing with this he is pretending to be the confused tourist. Je he's trying to stand on the edge of the bubble around the guy to give the guy the impression that Jeb doesn't quite see him and maybe it's just a weird coincidence. Okay. So he'll stop at the edge of the bubble, pull out the tourist map, and start looking around really confused. All right, so I'm going to say that that sounds like a manipulation and performance role. Okay. And I don't think you do not have dots in that, so that's plus one to your difficulty. So looking at a seven. That's a botch. You take out this map, right? That you have that you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm the tourist, and you kind of, you kind of fumble with the, you fumble with the zipper a bit. You pull it out and it falls on the ground, and you go to reach over, and then you like step, you step on your own shoelace, which has come untied a bit, and you stumble a bit right into him, and he just kind of shoves you off and stands up and gets like right up in your face. What the hell, man? Oh shit, man! No, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm tripping over my damn shoelaces. I can't see what the hell is going on around here. I can't find where I'm supposed to be. Can you help me with this map? Oh shit! You saw me. Oh yeah, maybe I just did. I didn't mean to fall on you. I got to tie my damn shoes. He just kind of stares you down for a moment and doesn't immediately respond to you. And he just is kind of looking you up and down. Jeb will put the cigarette in his mouth and he'll uh, puff on it a little bit without taking it out. And with the cigarette still in his lips. Man, you, you know this area? I just noticed your question, Tillman. Yeah, actually, you do. You see Jeb talking to this guy, actually, now that now that he's, like, moved in. And, and if anyone else, you know, if you're paying attention, Jeb having, you know, crossed and, like, gone through the crowd. And, like, he's now, like, talking to somebody who he almost tripped over. And, you know, you see this guy that he's talking to. And he's, like... Yeah, you don't know what they're saying, but you know you can see that they're engaged in conversation, and and it was quite you know like shoved them back, you know, kind of aggressive, and a couple of people like startled, turned around, was like, oh, what the hell, you know, and they just kind of back away a bit, and uh, but but now that there's no like, oh, it's obviously that nobody's throwing fists, people are kind of like, oh, okay, all right, you know, nothing crazy, and they're just going about their business, and then, but these two are still talking, and you ask him if he knows the area, and he says, uh, who the hell are you? Oh, shit, man, you're, I, I introduced myself. Hi, my name's Jeb. And Jeb will hold out his hand to shake his hand. He will look down at your hand, and after a moment, take it and shake your hand. Promise I don't buy it. And, you know, he's shaking your hand, and it's, like, icy. Just, it's not, it's not warm. It's not a handshake. It's, it's cold. And he just looks you in the eye, and he's like, get the hell out of here. Jeb's willpower is five. <laughs> <laughs> Jebediah, he says to you, get the hell out of here. And you just have this absolute, just overwhelming desire to just just flee and it like it's just it's so it's so overpowering that like if you want to you do anything outside of you know just leaving right now then you're you're gonna have to use willpower to try and um even do anything besides just fleeing immediately right now you're not you don't have to harm anyone on the way you don't have to do anything crazy like that you don't have to like shove people down or whatever but like you're just compelled to just do exactly what he just said get the hell out of here all right uh jeb i will spend a willpower and jeb will 
he'll leave, but he'll make sure that his exit takes him directly past the doctor. And it's so hard for you to focus on anything other than just that one line of get the hell out of here, get the hell out of here, get the hell out of here. And it's just running through your head over and over and over and over. Yep. So I'll spend the willpower to go past the doctor if that'll allow it. And as I go yeah. past the doctor, I will say, there's blood sucker here. We gotta get the hell out. And I'll go right back to my truck. Yeah. And you get in the truck, you start it, and you start driving away. Like, it is a, it is very, if you want to do anything less than that, it will take more willpower. You know, he'll, he'll just start heading back. Yeah, it'll take you some time to cover, to, to walk that distance. But you guys see this, you see Jeb, like, talking to this guy, and he turns, and he, there's a whole altercation, and he talks to him, and then just starts walking off. And he walks by Greg, he says this, and just keeps going. He just dips on y'all. Greg is gonna look puzzled for a moment, uh, like, seeing the car speed off, and then... Well, He's he hasn't gonna... gotten in the car yet. It's going to take him some time to get there. So you will see him just like he comes by you. He says mm-hmm. that and he just keeps going. And he is like he is briskly walking. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to follow him for a little, noticing that he doesn't react anymore. And then I let him walk off, I guess. Just trying to um, like uh, remain... Uh, what is it I'm trying to say? Well, trying to be, uh, stay in the crowd and not um, like be totally obvious. And then I want to approach uh, Robert if I see him. You would probably see me um, just kind of watching what's going down with a very puzzled look on my face, and kind of um, kind of going to grab Walter to try to reel him in because I think Robert right now is thinking that maybe the the cover has been been compromised and you know we might need to get the hell out of here. Okay, so I would like, since you're trying to kind of blend in, I would like you to roll for that. You want to just like not be observed and all that. So I'm going to say like dexterity, and I will let you choose between stealth or subterfuge. They both seem to fit for what you're doing. So I'm just going to blend in the crowd, kind of make my way over to him, and like try to be casual. Like both of those seem to fit. Both of us, or uh, I'm for you. I'm using subterfuge. Okay. Oh, I have. Three successes. Okay, so you are able to like, like you're you're just like another person. Nobody's paying you any attention. You know, no, nothing, nothing at all. And there's nobody who is like looking right at you. And and this guy, he's not paying you any attention. He was totally distracted by all this bullshit. And so as as he's kind of f- fleeing, for lack of a better term, the guy walks straight up to Walter. He just after all of that, you know, you got you're making your way over to where Robert is. And this this dude, this this guy, whatever whoever he is, he just walks straight up to Walter and just stops right in front of him. And you see this guy, Walter, you know, he just kind of comes out of the crowd, you know, there was kind of this weird altercation going on. You saw this happening and he just walks up to you and stops and stands there in front of you. Hello. Say what you got to say. I have your friend's phone here. And I kind of like tap my pocket in my windbreaker. Whatever, man. Why are you dang, dangling Iris in front of me? What do you hope to gain? Look, you've got backup. You've got people who can help me solve a problem. So you think dangling a woman that I love in front of me is going to get me to do what you want to do? Yeah, that's exactly what I think. You see how... Well, that's gone for you so far, right? Because it seems like someone else seems to have a different idea in mind. Maybe Alexa? I'm looking at his face for a reaction when I mention the name of Alexa. Yeah, you can use um, uh, Wits and Empathy. Okay, and what is the difficulty? Uh, we'll say a six. Two successes. Oh, wow. Okay. So he's uh, stoic. Doesn't, uh, doesn't respond to your question directly. He doesn't um, doesn't have any kind of facial twitch or anything like that. Nothing seems to it didn't it didn't seem to yeah. whatever he might be feeling. It's not showing. With seeing how Jeb reacted to this guy talking to this guy, the sign that I got from the book would would it be would it be normal for me to maybe try to look for signs or anything like this guy isn't a normal person? Yeah, you can roll for that. Yeah, can I roll for that, please? Yeah, perception and awareness. Okay, perception and awareness, same role. Okay, difficulty? Uh, six. All right. 
I'm going to spend a willpower, so I'm down to two willpower right now, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, thank God I said the willpower, right? <laughs> Shit. Well, that's uh, okay, so that's a failure. I can understand why you're looking for outside help. It seems like the people that you normally have help you aren't doing that well of a job. Don't seem to be doing that well of a jo job. Matter of fact, Deshaun was quick to give us information about you. He didn't take that much pride. Yeah, he's been taken care of. He folds his arms. He looks at you and he says, look, was that one of yours? Yeah. And it's funny because I find it out of nature for him to flee like that. Hmm. Maybe he is a coward. Mm, no, not at all. Not if you knew the things that man has done. You would know, yeah. right? Because you know about us, right? You say you know that I have people behind me. You know what we do, right? Oh, I do. Yeah. You need to be careful about who you surround yourself with. Mm hmm. Seems to, seems to be working out for me so far. Well, where's Iris? Where she's at? Yes, of course I want to know where she's at. I thought so. Do something for me then. I have it on good authority that uh, your friend over there, and he kind of gestures to where both Greg and Greg and Robert are standing. He's a uh, FBI looking into some cases that are springing up around town won't yes. bore you with the specifics but uh you need to convince him that they're unrelated mm. you do that i'll tell you everything you want what's with her tattoos he kind of uh actually shows a little bit of surprise in her face on, on his face you know just first time any kind of you see any kind of emotion besides just being stoic mm. just hmm. well I suppose I can tell you a little bit about that to show you I mean business. She's always at them. They've always been there. You just couldn't see them. She's a lot more than what you thought. Okay, I want to roll. Okay, because like hearing him say that, you know what I mean, and the, just the circumstances of it. And can I do some kind of roll to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because he's like, mm, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like a cult and maybe like what's in a cult or something like that. Um, what are you hoping to gain out of this? What it, what is what is this? What are you trying to get? Okay, so maybe, and I'm trying not to metagame, but I'll, and tell me if you feel I am after I explain. But like the sign, you know what I mean? Not being quite sure about this guy, not noticing those tattoos, even though they're out open. Him just saying she's always had them, so that means that somehow I wasn't able to see them this whole time, which I'm a pretty astute person. You know what I mean? Like these are all just like signs that are just like floating around in his head right now. And I would say with how inquisitive he is as a reporter or formerly, you know what I mean? Being a reporter and everything like he's trying to find a connection all the time with all this shit. That's just how his mind works, especially being the conspiracy type, you know? So it's like, he's getting all these bits and nuggets thrown at him and he's trying to find connections to them all right now, you know, or is that a no go role intelligence and occult. Right. I'm not going to spend any willpower this time because I'm down to two and I wish I would have saved my willpower. But that's how it always goes. What's the difficulty? Seven. <gasps> Four successes. You know, that that book that opened up in front of you earlier, mm -hmm. it uh, it talked about in that passage how how sometimes these revenants have the ability to control your mind and make you think things are one way when they're not. They They can warp your perceptions and it sounds exactly like that like just whatever it might have been something something warped your perception and even a little bit of that was happening here even you're thinking about it and you're like you didn't even notice this guy at first until jeb like practically tripped over him oh my god like his head right now is just like spinning you know what i mean like his reality of all this shit and he's just like Ahead, roll, roll a self control for me. Okay. All right. Uh, difficulty. Oh, geez, two dice. <laughs> Fuck my life. Uh, what difficulty? Um, I feel like this is one of those things that's like world shattering for you. Yeah. So we're gonna call this like we're gonna call this one a an eight. Oh, thank God. One success. Okay. So you can you can maintain your cool and not like like you like you said your head's spinning. You're like whoa, but it definitely like it's like showing. You know, like that mm. hit deep. What do you want? You want that? You want that case? You're saying you don't want it to be looked into. You want it to be, it's not tied. You're telling me that you want me to deceive my friend, right? I don't care what you tell your friend, but he's going to report back that they're not related. Do you have a way for me to contact you once this is done? 
I'll hang on to the burner that I have. You've got the number. Listen, what's what's your name, by the way? Just call me T. Mm, all right, T. You know what's funny is I really, I really don't think you know about what me and my friends really do. And I just kind of like smile at him for a second, trying to like uphold the facade. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm walking with some kind yeah. of control. Yeah, but it's 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 failing miserably. I know it's still <laughs> showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you have a good evening, T. And I turn around, oh, and I, I, I turn around, and walk off, and I'm like, oof, my head's hey, racing right now. Be yeah. quick, your ride is getting away. I turn, I turn around. I'm like, oh, don't worry. There's more of us here than you think. And I like turn around and I walk off. What do you do? I am just heading straight for Robert's car, and I'm just not even looking at them. But I am. I need to have a talk with both these gents, like ASAP. Like I need to have a talk, talk with them. And All right, Greg and Robert. Yeah, and I'm like hoping they follow me, but I'm like don't want to give away. Well, Greg went over to Robert, and while they were talking, while yeah. you guys were talking, mm-hmm. you, they had a moment. So, yeah. is there anything you want to do or say? You guys just kind of watching the situation as they're talking in front of you. You can have your own conversation as they were talking. As I'm kind of as I as I was kind of observing Walter from afar the whole time I'm just going what the fuck was that what the fuck is, what are they doing right now what the hell was that and then when I see him start to start to make his way towards the towards the parking I'm just like okay shit and now I'm just trying to push through the crowd to to reach Walter because I'm just like what what the hell's going on right now well Greg had like approached you in a way that didn't catch the attention of what was happening over there. Oh right, so I so I didn't see the conversation at all. I've, I've just been. Well, they were talking. It's obvious. It's like yeah. right there, you know, just out of earshot. Yeah. You know, if there's a crowd. But what I'm saying is that, like, if he had any, if you guys had anything you want to discuss, you can while still maintaining eyes on them. Okay, so then in that case, I'm gonna I'm gonna say to to Gregory, who's who's right next to me, who the fuck is this guy? What do you what do you make of this guy? And I'm trying to snap some. I don't know. Well, maybe if I'm if I can do that without um, without raising any eyes. I don't know who that is, but I think he's our contact. I don't know if it's T or one of his uh, guys, but he did he did something to Jeb. It was really weird. Like you saw him walk off. He uh, came to me and like under his breath he said, "There's one of these uh, these bloodsuckers." Here. And I think he means uh, vampire. And I think this guy, there, there's something iffy about him. Shit, Jeb doesn't shake easily. Uh, fuck. Exactly. Yes. And so at that point, I think I'm I'm just gonna just try to peel through the crowd to try to reach Walter because now I'm like, oh fuck. Okay. So you guys are kind of talking off the side, and then you see like Walt uh, Walter start walking away from this guy towards. Uh, you said you were going towards them, right? I was going towards their car. I didn't like, I'm just like hoping they see me. I just like, no, I'll tell you what's on my mind when we get there. But yeah, I don't okay. want to give away their position. What well, he probably knows who knows, but he, you know what I mean? Before yeah. I separate from Greg, I just want to say, do you, do you think that guy made us? Do you think, uh, do you think, we, do you think he, he knows, he knows we're here? Do you think he knows we came together? Didn't he point at us at one point, Andrew? Uh, no, but he, he addressed, he, like, uh, he like, about- he didn't point, but he kind of like head nodded in your direction. Like he he clearly like was aware of you. Okay. Well, at that point, I say, um, or I start out with, I think he didn't see us yet, and then he nods, and I'm like, okay, fuck, <laughs> he didn't. He totally saw us. Fuck. And I'm just like beeline speed walking to the car. Like, All right. So friend. this guy, he turns and walks into this crowd, and like just slips between a group of people and just fucking disappears um when i get to the car i turn around look for greg and robert see if they're coming or whatever yeah i'm definitely following yeah me too and i'm in a motion for robert like like body language like get in the fucking car let's go and yeah i i pick up my my speed a little bit as as much as i you know i'm kind of power walking a little bit because you know robert doesn't really doesn't really yeah. run um I assume. <laughs> <laughs> unless unless he's really scared Unless he's very scared. <laughs> Unless somebody starts shooting guns. As soon as a gu- as soon as a gun fires, though, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's when he runs. And I'm gonna like hope that Greg's riding with us, and I'm gonna like 
Yes. The, yeah, I'm going to get in the back seat. And I guess when you start driving off or whatever, I'm going to be like, I'm just going to break down and start wailing, just like crying all loud. You know what I mean? Sobbing in the back. Storyteller, I got, I wanted to shoot something to you and um, an idea I have, and I want to see if it makes sense with my flaw. So I am blood, I am blood bound to Iris, right? Um, and I, I, here's my idea that I, I want to know if it's normal for Walter to think that somehow like the talk that he had with Greg, I don't know if you remember in front of the Starbucks when he's all coked out, that he feels compromised and he, he, he is starting to like feel his pain because he knows that like he's compromised and he knows that this T guy wants him to betray his friend and like lead him astray and try to get him to do whatever is against his best interest. But part of me as a player would really think that it'd be like a cool story element for me to realize I might be compromised and me to like beg Gregory to find some way to fix that in me. You know what I mean? Like, like just like, but I want to know though, before I even go on ahead with a scene like that or go on with anything like that, would me with Walter being bloodbound, would he be able to even think that straight? You know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Be able to think that rationale or would that just be like, would his urge 100% be to mislead his group or somehow convince them to lie to the FBI? I think that deep down somewhere, he is suspicious, you know, but he doesn't want to, he, he doesn't want to believe that. Okay. So what I will allow for you to try and open up in that way and do that is to spend a point of willpower. Yeah. Because you are supernaturally bound to this woman, and you're like, you don't even want to consider the idea. But if you want to entertain that idea, and you want to, you want to, for the scene, just be able to just open up about your deepest, darkest fears. Mm -hmm. Spend a point of willpower. Yeah, I will. By the way, I'm down to one willpower point right now. <laughs> no. That, does cocaine give you willpower? I'm joking. Okay. No. Okay. So I'm just gonna be like sobbing and just like. Probably like just, you know, that deep wrench and pain, just like bawling and fucking screaming in the back there. And I'm just like fucking curl, you know, curled up, dude, just fucking rage, full of rage, too. And just like feeling pissed off at fucking everything. And like there's a moment where I like can like start breathing normally again. And I'm going to fucking be like, pull over, pull over right now. Pull over, pull it. Stop. Just fucking stop. I slam on the brakes when he does that, because first of all, he's just. He's uncomfortable to to see Walter in this in this state. He's just like, what the fuck is going on right now? Like, okay, this is you know, this is just getting stranger by the second. You know, he's he's wailing in the backseat. He's totally hysterical. You know, I'm imagining Robert would have tried to say stuff like calm down, but you know, just not be able to get through it all. So when he says stop the car, his his gut reaction is just slamming his foot on the brakes, and everybody would just kind of you know, jolt forward a little bit as the car comes to like a, a dead stop. And, and I just pull over to the side. I just like open the door right away and I get out and, and like on the passenger side and I'm just opening Gregory's door and I'm like, come out, get out here right now. Get out. Just get, just come out here right now. Walter, what yeah. the fuck are you doing, man? Just come out here. I gotta get the fuck out of the car. Just come out here. Listen to me. And I, I get out of the car, you know, not really walking too far away from it. Just kind of looking over the, the hood with my arms on it just kind of seeing or like the roof of the car rather standing outside with my arms on top just watching walter at the other side of the car just like what the fuck is going on i'm gonna wait for like gregory to get out of the car like yeah he's gonna get out of the car and like arms wide open like what the fuck <laughs> guessing you're gonna interrupt him <laughs> i'm just gonna grab your shoulders not like in a attacking thing you know what i mean but more like in a pleading you know and i'm gonna be like I'm fucking tainted. You gotta help me, Gregory. You gotta help me. You gotta help me. I, I'm not who I am. I'm not who I am. They have me, Gregory. They fucking have me. She fucking is one of them, Gregory. She fucking has me. Right. Walter, take okay. it easy. Come on, man. No, don't let stop. Don't. You gotta understand. She fucking has me. I'm fucking compromised. You gotta, you gotta do something, Gregory. You gotta do something. Please, man. You gotta do something. Okay, okay, I promise. Something, you gotta do something, man. I'm serious. 
They're, they're everywhere. He was one of them, and she's one of them, and I don't know what to do. Walter, Walter, calm down. We're your friends, okay? We're going to help you. And I'm just going to, like, slide, like, my butt on the curb and just, like, put my elbows on my knees and just put my hands on my, like, face and just start, like, sobbing, you know, sitting there on the curb. Yeah, uh, Greg is going to sit uh, next to you and with zero empathy um, console you badly. And I'm going to sit on the other side of you, so we kind of have you, like, sandwiched in the middle. And as I'm kind of patting you on the back, like, there, there, it's okay, it's okay, buddy. I'm going to look at Greg, just kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> and Greg is like, I'm so lost, I don't know. <laughs> you gotta kill me if you can't fix me. You gotta kill me if you can't fix me. You gotta kill me if you can't fix me. Walter, we're not going to kill you, buddy. Come on, man. They want, they want me to make you lie. They want me to make you, to lead you astray. He wants me, not you, to connect these murders. It's all fucking tied together. I was right, but I've been compromised. In me. I, you don't understand. I can't, even if I know, I know that she's one of them, and I still can't stop loving her. I can't stop thinking about her. Even doing this is ripping me apart right now. I feel like I'm doing something horrible. You have to understand. I am fucking compromised. You all can die because of me. I could fucking be the reason that you all die. This is serious. You have to fucking listen to me. Listen, Walter. Get in the car. We're going to find Jeb. We're going to all sit down in the bunker where it's safe. And we can, we can talk about this, okay? We can talk it out. We can yeah. figure out what our next step is. But we'll take it as a group, okay? And we got your back. You never have to worry about that, okay? See, okay. they don't have Robert. They can't have Robert. You're, you said that. Just take me home. Take me home. I'm just going to like go in the back seat and just kind of like lay down. Probably just crash from like the adrenaline dump and like the cocaine coffee coming down and all that shit just like fucking pass out in the back yeah you were feeling it hard right now uh you you've been like just jumped up for the past couple of couple of days and right now it is it's all coming down cocaine coffee's a son of a bitch <laughs> so we cut over to jeb jebediah you snap too you realize you're like you were you're you're merging from the 395 highway onto the 95. You're halfway to you're you're passing through Springfield right now, and you suddenly don't feel that like desire, that urge to just get out of here, get out of here. It just it just leaves you. Jeb will stop. He'll blink. He will white knuckle the steering wheel and yell, "Son of a bitch!" And he will turn the truck around and head right back where he left. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so like just to the exact spot or yeah he, he will go right back to the exact parking spot okay he What's will uh he's gonna grab he'll go through his bags find a nice relatively concealable shotgun strap that up under his coat and march into the crowd in oh. a rage <laughs> okay well let's see if you get yourself arrested <laughs> How about a dexterity and stealth to try and hide this? What would you and like the then, difficulty to be? Uh, let's call it a. Let's just call it a six because it. If there's anyone opposing, I'll just roll something. Two and successes. Then, and then follow it up with a perception alertness. Okay. Also at six. Three successes. Okay. So, you park. You grab this gun. You put it in your. You're trying to hide it. You're moving into the crowd. You know, there's all these people around. And you see that there is a police officer. There's several, always. But you see there's one who's kind of looking at you oddly as you are making your way towards this memorial. You haven't made it there yet, right? Because remember, you have to park a little little ways away. And you're on your way over there. And somebody is definitely like kind of he's he's paying you more attention than anyone else, just kind of looking directly at you. Uh standing outside of his uh his cruiser and just kind of got this like concerned look on his face. All right. Do I see my acquaintances, my fellow hunters? You don't. Do I see T anywhere? You don't. You you're approaching the area. And as you're coming up, you see this cop looking at you. You see the tourists everywhere, you know, the, the, the crowds. 
and these guys are gone. And then the cop starts like slowly walking towards you. All right, I'll pull out. I'll pull a cell phone out of my fanny pack, and I will call the doctor. Okay. This is around the time that uh, you guys are getting back into the car. Greg Turner? Where the hell are y'all? And where's that son of a bitch? We are on our way to the bunker. Um, Walter has a nervous breakdown. God damn it! Yeah, it's pretty bad. Uh, fine, I'll meet y'all there. Oh, by the way, uh, the guy just effing disappeared. Well, yeah, I'm not surprised. I'll meet y'all at the, at the house. Okay. And I will hang up the cell phone. I'll say it's a that flip phone. That cop is still slowly I'll, approaching. I'll flip it shut. And I will look at the cop. I will nod my head. I'll look around. <clears throat> slump my shoulders in defeat. And shuffle back towards the car. Or the truck, rather. Okay. Roll another perception alertness roll for me. Two successes. So, you you leave. You get in your car. But you can't help but notice that that police officer gets into his cruiser and he follows you to your car and follows you for quite some time, actually, while you're in the city. Eventually, however, he leaves you alone. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion so that your media could get the attention you want? Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called Weight Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong, and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. High Level Games the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin at highlevelgames.ca Please, help. They're coming. (laughs) The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The Central District is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire Districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city?
Neon Masquerade. The Demon's Mirror. Thirteen Candles. Three Chronicles Running Through the Undead Veins of the City of Angels. The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to eorpodcast.com and search the Duets tag to find out more.